In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about creating your own advanced navigation controls. Okay, let's get started here. I've done uh, some preliminary work here, so this should be a very short video. Uh, there's the obvious stuff here on this particular course. We've got a next and a back button. Um, pretty straightforward. It's just uh, the back is go to previous slide. That's the, the action that you'll find on the properties panel. And for the next button, you've got go to next slide. Pretty straightforward. I usually pause one of my buttons, not all of them and I usually choose the next button. So after a period of time, whether it be 1.5 seconds or 10 seconds or however long the slide might be on the screen for, uh, just shortly before that I have a pause that runs to that point there. And this works pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to demonstrate that. What I've also created on here is the ability to toggle sound and how this is achieved uh, is through your properties panel. It's just a button, nothing fancy. Um, and I've created an advanced action called mute. Um, it's not entirely accurate because it will toggle the sound, so it will turn off the volume and then turn it back on again for you. Let's show you what that advanced action looks like. I'll just click that icon and here it is. So it's called mute and I just simply use the action toggle and I use the, um, the system variable CP command mute. And the effect that that has is it turns on the sound, turns off the sound. Really straightforward there. Closed captioning. Um, I haven't taken the time to put some closed captioning in this course, but again, very similar idea. We'll go into the advanced action and show you what that's like. So closed captioning, toggle. Again, a system variable called CP command CC, short for closed captioning, and this will turn the closed captioning window uh, on and off. We'll be able to see that once I demo this for you. Um, but the, like I said, there's no closed captioning, so it'll just be a little window that opens and closes. And uh, I've also created these volume plus and minus controls here. And let me show you how the advanced action works for that. Again, also just a simple advanced action. I'll show you the volume plus. And we go into advanced actions. The action name is called volume plus. And I type in the expression. The action is to run this expression. CP command volume, which is a system variable. I'm assigning it the current CP command volume uh, value plus five more dBs or units of volume. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I tried plus one and I found that I had to click too many times to have the volume raise uh, a noticeable amount. So the same thing with volume minus, I just changed the uh, expression to minus five instead of plus five. But uh, it seems to work quite well. Uh, but you can choose any value you wish. It could be plus one if you want to make very small tiny incremental changes to your volume, uh, but you could make it plus 10 if you want as well to make a more significant jump in volume. The more complicated control here is a replay button, and that's something I know a lot of you are looking for in your courses. Many users would like to go back and hear the same content or read or see the same content displayed a second or third time. And the easiest way to do that that, I can th that I'm aware of is to do sort of a two-step advanced action. On the uh, entrance of your, your slide, and to, to see that, you just click in your scrap area here, which is outside of the slide itself. Go to the Properties panel, and you'll see the action for on enter. So in other words, when this slide enters, run this advanced action. And I've called it Capture Opening Frame. And you can call it whatever you want, but that works for me. I remember what that is. Let's take a look at what that advanced action looks like. So in the advanced action window, like I said, I've called a capture opening frame. I assign a variable that I have created called opening underscore frame with the system variable cp info current frame. cp info current frame can be 
uh, zero if you're starting a course right from slide one, or it could be 10,000 if you're 10,000 frames into the course, or you know 6,400 frames, or whatever it might be. All you're doing is you're assigning this variable, and it can be called whatever you want. Uh, you're assigning that variable with the value at the entrance of each of your slides. So once that's captured into memory, uh, into that variable, you, the next thing you're going to want to do is create an action that's for clicking the replay button itself. It's also an advanced action, and I've called the script replay, but again you could call it whatever you wish. And what happens when you click replay is it assigns the system variable, and this is an interesting system variable. It's CP command go to frame and resume. Right? So in other words, let's say you previously stored in opening frame um, a value of 10,000. That just happens to be the frame of slide number three, let's say. What I'm going to, to say with this command is go to frame, whatever it is, and run from that point. That's the resume part. Um, so again, I'm just assigning the system variable with the previous opening frame that I captured at the beginning of that slide. And of course, opening frame gets updated every time you visit a new slide uh, where you wish to have a replay button on it. So that works pretty well. Let's demo this and take a look at how this works. So I'm just going to preview the project. It's a short project, so it shouldn't take too long to load up here. Welcome to slide one. In this course... So I can toggle the sound off, right? That works perfectly fine. I can toggle it back on. And it's to create a basic back and next button, which will go to previous slide and go to next slide. Okay, let's... Simple enough. Let's toggle that off for a moment and try the closed captioning. You can see the closed captioning window appears along the bottom. Again, I haven't put any closed captioning in, so there's no text there, but that's where it would appear if it were already put in. Now let's uh, go to the next slide. We'll toggle the sound Achoo. back on. In this course we will be learning about how to create your own navigation controls. Let's lower the volume. Next we will create a mute button using advanced action. So it's getting quieter and quieter. Too challenging. We will also create a simple now I'm raising button it. for closed captioning. Click next to continue. Works well. So let's hit next and go to slide three and we'll try that replay button out. Welcome to slide three. Welcome to slide three. Welcome to slide three. Next, we will create volume up and volume down buttons so, using advanced totally actions. Works. Welcome to slide. And I can Welcome to click slide it three. As many Welcome times to as slide I wish. Four. Now we will create. A Welcome to slide four. Now we will create a slide replay button by capturing the frame number on enter of all our slides. So it totally works as expected. Some people may want to use these types of controls rather than you using the built-in play controls because um, some people don't like the built-in play controls. Um, you know, they're kind of a necessary evil, but you know, if you have a client who's looking for a very specific look and feel for their navigation controls, this gives you an assortment of different uh, controls that you can include in that navigation control. So hopefully you guys found that useful. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm doing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was great, awesome, interesting, hilarious, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.